Hi, you're watching Theophany, bringing God to light at the intersection of film and theology. Two of the longest running and highest quality action franchises of all time are James Bond and Mission Impossible. Bond has been around much longer, of course, but no Bond actor has outlasted the tenure of Tom Cruise as Ethan Hunt. What's really interesting about these two franchises, though, is that in both series' most recent entries, they've been wrestling with what makes an action hero relevant in the present day. Specifically in the two most recent films of each series, Skyfall and Spectre for James Bond, and Rogue Nation and Fallout for Ethan Hunt, these movies push our heroes and the organizations they work for into considering whether or not the classic action hero or spy is relevant to the world we now live in. This is a question that the films ask their heroes to answer, which is fitting because in many ways, these are the types of questions the real world, our world, is asking about these types of movies. What role do spies and spy movies have in a world that is increasingly more globally conscious more technologically savvy, and less impressed with violence and chauvinism. Dink, say goodbye to Felix. Uh, man talk. While both series are trying to respond to these emerging realities, I think one succeeds more than the other. And above all, they raise interesting questions for Christians in the present day about how we embrace and adapt to a rapidly changing world without losing our most important values. If you look closely at these four films, you notice a striking number of similarities. In Skyfall, the 00 program is under extreme scrutiny for losing a list containing the identities of all undercover operatives around the world. But more than just questioning the failure of their most recent mission, M and the 00 program are on the chopping block because they are considered obsolete and no longer useful in the new world. This storyline continues into Spectre, where the program is actually dissolved and merged into MI5. In both cases, Bond continues investigating his leads without the support of his country or organization. In the end, the value of Bond and the 00 program is demonstrated by villains that mirror the skill set of the 00s and present a threat that only can be matched by the old ways. Sometimes the old ways are the best. Sometimes the old ways are the best. Now let's talk mission. Rogue Nation begins with Jeremy Renner's character defending the IMF's recent mission failures with their methods accused of being, well, take a listen. The so-called impossible mission force is not just a rogue organization. It is an outdated one, a throwback to an era without transparency and without oversight. Mr. Chairman. The time has come to dissolve the IMF. Mr. Chairman. And transfer their salvageable assets to the CIA. Mr. Chairman. And that's exactly what happens. Just like the 00 program, the IMF gets dissolved and absorbed into an existing program and Ethan Hunt has to keep investigating as a fugitive, going after a villain who matches the skill set of the IMF. The Syndicate is real. A rogue nation trained to do what we do. An anti-IMF. Just like Bond, the storyline continues into the next film. But rather than just investigating the IMF, Fallout interrogates the character of Ethan Hunt himself. IMF is Halloween, Alan. A bunch of grown men in rubber masks playing trick-or-treat. And if he had held on to the plutonium in Berlin, we wouldn't be having this conversation. And his team would be dead. Yes, they would. That's the job. Clearly, Ethan Hunt's journey in Fallout is similar to Bond's in Skyfall and Spectre. He unearths his past and it forces him to question his values and his value in a changing world. Ultimately, Hunt holds on to who he is in the midst of it all, and his unique characteristics, just like Bond's, prevail uniquely in saving the world. But despite their similarities, I believe that the Mission Impossible movies make a much better case than the Bond movies do. Let's talk about 
the differences. The Bond movies make the case that Bond doesn't need to change, and they actually gradually return him to the most classic form of his character. In Skyfall, he is essentially stripped of everything but his will and a hunting knife. But once he and the movie overcome this, he returns to the leather door, to Money Penny, and a gadgety car, and goes back to his old ways of being egotistical and using women. Harkening back to the olden days, these movies don't serve as opportunities for Bond to change, but for the world to admit that Bond is as valuable as he's always been. One of the reasons Spectre is such an aimless film is because it has little to do besides retreat to classic Bond archetypes, regardless of whether or not they even make sense anymore. The man you're talking to now, the man inside your head, is Ernst Stoffel Blofeld. See what I mean? And it's such a huge bummer, because the first two Daniel Craig Bond movies do the exact opposite. They show a changing world, and they force Bond to change within it. Bond's ego and womanizing meet their match with Vesper, and he undergoes this change. In Quantum of Solace, Bond begins the movie completely unhinged in grief and rage from the events of the last movie. But when he encounters the film's main Bond girl, Camille, their relationship isn't sexual. It's a relationship of kinship. He connects with her and learns from her and that journey moves him out of his despair. So it's a shame that Skyfall and Spectre change course from slowly changing Bond to deciding that the world needs to change instead. Bond gets let off the hook and he goes back to some problematic habits. I win. What do you say to that? <sighs> it's a waste of good scotch. To be clear, Skyfall is still one of the best Bond movies of all time. It's really exciting, it's poetic, and has some of the most beautiful cinematography you'll ever see in any action film, hands down. And Casino and Quantum are not without their own problems. But in terms of making its point about whether or not a super spy makes sense in the modern world, I think Mission Impossible just does it better from a thematic perspective. The Mission Impossible movies make the case for the IMF and Ethan Hunt because they put their values elsewhere. Instead of brute force and violence, the IMF uses intelligence, relentlessness, and willingness to sacrifice to win the day. In Rogue Nation, the IMF is necessary to beat the Syndicate because they have the patience and skill to outsmart, outstrategize, and ultimately trap the villain. In Fallout, we learn that one of Ethan's unshakable virtues is that he is unwilling to trade one life for many, and so he has to utilize every tool he has to not just save the world, but to save innocent lives along Some the way. Some flaw deep in your core being simply won't allow you to choose between one life and millions. You see that as a sign of weakness. To me, that's your greatest strength. The Mission Impossible movies show us a hero in Ethan Hunt who has skills and values that are needed now more than ever. In a less personal and more globalized world, we need heroes willing to put themselves at risk to do the impossible. Heroes who look out for the needs of the innocent few even while saving the many. And heroes who prefer compassion and resilience over strength and brutality. In the parts of our world that need the most help, we need unstoppable forces, not immovable objects. So who do we want to be as Christians? Should we be immovable, stubborn, and expect the world to change for us? Or maybe is God trying to pour new wine into our old wineskins until we burst open? We may need new wineskins to hold the new gifts that God is giving us. We may have to change some of the ways we do things because God is always out ahead of us, calling us into new life. We ought to be open to the new things God is doing in us 
if we want to be part of the new thing God is doing in the world. It seems harder than ever to keep up with the changing world, and even harder to face our own fears around change. But it's the mission we are called to. And with God, no mission is, well, you get it. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. And if you're a fan of the channel, check out our new outlet, theophanyframes.wordpress.com. It's short form reflections, readable in five minutes, about whatever films have brought God to light for us recently. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.